So as it is the iPad month for Apple, I guess Samsung also decided to step up their game in terms of the tablet slash detachables market. Because we can't let that declining industry have no competition. So yesterday, Samsung unveiled the iPad by Samsung. No, 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 I know what you're thinking. You don't like these new gadgets because they copied Apple and Apple's the best. That is only partly true. Apple is the best. They are copying Apple, but that doesn't mean I don't like these new gadgets. I do think they're kind of cool, but before I get into that, take a quick look at the Galaxy Tab S3. Does it look anything at all like any other tablet you may have seen before? If you're saying no, this is a totally different design, would it influence your opinion enough to know that they chose an exact 9.7 inch display, literally to the tenth of an inch, the exact same display size as the iPads as long as they've been around. Ever since 2010, they have been 9.7 inches. And that just happened to be the same screen size they went with. But hey, I don't bash them for that. I think that is the perfect size. Why change it? It works. Though so the difference here is the Galaxy Tab S3 has a glass back with aluminum rim, which I might add looks very, very pretty. It's definitely something iPads don't have, probably because it attracts a lot of fingerprints on the back. But hey, it does match with the Galaxy S phone lineup, which is really cool. I'm sure having the Tab S3 with the Galaxy S7 is a pretty cool combo. But you know, the real thing I'm jealous of with the Galaxy phones is those curved edges that when you're holding it, it's almost as if there are no bezels at all. You can barely see them. And it just feels like you're holding a screen. That's really cool. And you know, when you look at the Tab S3, not the same story. Giant flipping bezels, very, very thick on the edges, and we don't really see that kind of similar design, which I wish we did. Like the Tab S3 is not a bad upgrade. It's pretty standard. You know, we got our four speakers now, got the updated specs, we got USB-C, a redesigned S Pen that can understand many, many different points of pressure input. That's all cool and all, but how neat would it have been to see a tablet with those curved edges that nearly extinguish the bezels on the sides, and you could keep that similar form factor, but just have a more massive display. You know, kind of like that 10 and a half inch iPad we're getting this month. And on Twitter, most of you guys seem to say that that was the most exciting iPad coming out. The one with less bezels and no home button. That makes it cool. So in terms of just standalone tablets, not detachables for Samsung, I'm not really sure if they thought this was going anywhere. It felt more like a, when was the last time we upgraded our tablets? Oh God, yeah, it was a while ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Huh. Okay, yeah, just uh, throw in the new stuff. Got it. Not a whole lot different from the S2. And even worse, the Android tablet market has a huge operating system problem, as in apps don't support that big screen very much. Android on a big screen does not run as well. It's just not something a lot of people are very interested in. It's sad to say that because Android's all about customization, but there's not a lot of pro software for tablets or a lot of optimized software to begin with. So when you put Android on a tablet that you release, you're kind of guaranteeing that it's not gonna be a game changer. However, when you put Windows 10 on your tablet, you're basically telling everyone that it's a laptop first. Which is the more exciting thing about this release, the Galaxy Book, which comes in two sizes, 10 inches and 12 inches. And both of them are running Windows 10, which, you know, I have opinions on, but there's no denying that there is far more you can do with Windows 10 than there is you can do with Android. And these tablets that I prefer to call detachables because they're basically advertising them with the keyboard and trackpad always, as in the touch display might not be a priority when you're using it, but they got some pretty decent specs in them. The new 12 inch version got the Cavi Lake core processors. I just know I said that wrong. The i5 core. Let's just say it at that. It's gonna be faster than last year's. Similar storage options as the iPad Pro with 120 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes, which is a lot for a phone and not that much for a laptop. And this isn't either, so I guess that fits. And four gigabytes of RAM or eight gigabytes of RAM depending on what you want. Now that's the 12 inch version. That has all the updated specs. The 10 inch is definitely a reduction of it. That has an Intel Core M chip, which is obviously not as fast. And it has a full HD display which means not very crisp. It's standard, it probably will work just fine, although it doesn't support HDR, which the 12 inch does. And when you're telling people about high dynamic range, you're just trying to be fancy about how colors look amazing, which I'm sure they do, I'm not discrediting that. And the 12 inch display has a 2160 by 1440 resolution, so things should be looking pretty good. And what I appreciate the most about the Galaxy Books is these support USB-C, and not just one. The pictures look like two ports, so I'm gonna say there's two USB-C ports on it. There could be more, I might be wrong. And as we all know, I do believe that is the last port and I want everyone to adopt that and the Surface lineup has it. They're both very very powerful and they're probably more expensive and can do more than these Galaxy books but neither of them share that vision of USB-C being the future. They're still sporting USB-A ports and Thunderbolt 2. I really hope Surface updates those this year. And 
these Galaxy Books Sport LTE is that you can have a SIM card in them and actually use the data on them on the go. Something else the Surface Books can't do. I just think this almost isn't fair to Microsoft, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying it sucks for them because they invented the operating system and they're making their own hardware, the Surface, and now they've got new competition with Samsung because I don't think Microsoft and Samsung competed on many things before. And Samsung's running Microsoft software on their own hardware, which in a couple ways can be better than their hardware. That kind of sucks for Microsoft. I hope they can really step up their game this year. It's, they already had enough competition with the iPads. So Samsung's trying to meet this middle ground market where you don't have all that money for a Surface Pro or a Surface Book, but you still want a very portable, very light with desktop power tablets detachable that is still very, very capable and can do a lot of the things the Surface can. At least that's what I'd hope. We actually don't know the prices on these yet. So I really hope they're undercutting the Surface lineup. If they're matching it or higher, it's like, I don't know where they think they're going with 256 gigs of storage. That's going to put a lot of professionals in a box. But it is very refreshing for me to see a company that's trying to make an ecosystem that's not Apple. Products that work together, like Samsung Flow is being installed on Windows 10 for these Galaxy Books, which allows you to view notifications from your phone on your Windows 10 device, which could definitely parallel that Apple ecosystem. So they're running different operating systems, but Samsung is trying to bridge that gap. They also now have the Chromebook Plus, which recently came out, which runs Chrome OS. So their phones in the Tab S3 run Android, and now crossovers run Windows 10, and they've got Chrome OS with that one Chromebook. So in conclusion, Samsung is definitely a hardware company, but they're working very, very hard across multiple operating systems to ensure one seamless experience as much as possible, which I find very brave and innovative. No, they did not make me want to switch at all, though, no. but I admire that. And honestly, I'm really, really in favor of any company that's not making this right now. God, I hate you. Review coming soon. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.